So I was given this lesson today, and the student asked how to play altissimo. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a video about this. I mean, I, I told him what I'm about to tell you, so consider this like a free lesson, or part of a lesson, at least. So how to play altissimo? Okay, so you've probably been online and stuff and searched a lot of tutorials already, and you've learned about the overtone series. They say stuff like, have a super tight embouchure, <laughs> or have good voicing, and um, stuff like that. And honestly, they're all right. But the thing that I disagree with is that you can't put learning autismo into words. You have to feel it. I'm going to demonstrate to you how to feel and how to gain awareness of what to feel in order to execute altissimo or the altissimo register. First, let me clarify that altissimo is not like as impressive as screaming on a trumpet. Like altissimo is not the super saiyan of amateurs. It's not like, oh, I have to play every day for 10 years and then my amateur will be strong enough to play altissimo finally. Or like, oh, ultra instinct altissimo. <laughs> Not at all. Reaching altissimo is not that impressive. Like, it's not. I I learned it on, like, my third year of playing saxophone, and it just happened on accident. It's, it's kind of like riding a bike. It's like, once you find it, then you're like, oh, that's it. And then the rest of your life, you just work on refining it. I'd imagine, like, when you rode a bike, you weren't, like, struggling for weeks months years just struggling and then you could ride the bike for like one second and then you fell and then you came back the next day and you could ride it for two seconds and then you felt no it was just like ah oh. and you just started riding the bike you're like oh maybe it was a little wobbly but you could ride the bike that's how altissimo is your first altissimo notes might not be pretty they probably won't be pretty at all but once you find it, you're like oh and then the rest is refining it. And I'll show you what muscles will be used to refine it. So a lot of tutorials will be like, all right, you have to engage this muscle and engage your tongue in this way and this way. And honestly, like, we can't see what's going on back there. And if you're anything like me, like all these words just don't help. I'm a feeler. The words help you get in the ballpark, but how can you feel it out if you don't even know what to feel for? And I'm gonna show you. A lot of people are really underestimating how much work your brain does for you just because it exists and you have all the DNA it takes to be a human. For example, to frown, to do this, research is saying all kinds of things, but we know that it takes at least 40 muscles to do that. Now, if none of us ever was told this or looked at an anatomy chart, none of us would even know that we have that many muscles in our face, let alone even more. And definitely no one will know that it takes that much just to frown. That was probably a trillion muscles. Basically, there was never one point in your life where you're like, all right, let me train this. All right, let me train this one. All right, let me train this one. I'm sweating. I'll come back to it tomorrow. No, no, you just, you just, you just frown. And your brain does all that work for you. Your brain is incredible. And learning altissimo is the same way, like, shouldn't put so much thought on which muscles should I use which does this one go this way no dude let me show you let me show you how to make this simple when you whistle do that just whistle up and down do you notice that your tongue is moving and your aperture might be moving too did you ever like measure did you ever do measurements? Did you ever like calculate how far your tongue should be moving? No, no, you didn't. You just felt it out and you just did it just casually day by day and you just got better at it. Your first note that you ever whistled, you're probably like, oh, I finally did it. And then the rest from then on, just like a bike, the rest is just refining. Same thing with altissima. The muscles that you're gonna be using can be a bit of a mystery. Here's how to find them. Now, just like whistling, how it takes tongue and aperture, it's the same thing. We're gonna practice voicing, and I just want you to take the mouthpiece by itself. This is a jazz mouthpiece. Now, it's a great idea to have a piano by you. So first, we're gonna start off with a concert A. It's okay, you're gonna have to find it at first. And 
And that took a combination of stuff going on in my mouth and my armature pressure. Now how much pressure? How much should I be doing? That doesn't matter. What matters? Get the pitch. Your brain will do the rest of the work for you. Your brain is amazing. You have the goal be your pitch and then let your body do the rest. Try not to think about it so much. Now you're gonna play concert A, go down a chromatic note, and then go back up to the concert A. Now go down a, a whole step. Try to work on going as far down as you possibly can. And even try stuff like playing a, a major scale. I'm going to start on a concert B and then go down the major scale. <laughs> now, as you try this at first, you're going to find that Oh man, I can't go that low. And the reason is, is because you're doing too much work with your amateur. And the only way you're going to go down that low or span a whole octave or even lower is if you engage the stuff going on inside. And I can give you like clues as to what I'm doing, but I can't tell you exactly what I'm doing because I, I can't see inside of there. But I can tell you that the lower I go, my tongue gets pushed back. I start off like right here maybe. And then I go, ee. I don't know how much, all I know is how it feels. So honestly, just take your mouthpiece and just experiment. Do all kinds of things like. Have a good range of pitches that you can do on your mouthpiece alone. And so after you do that, after you gain good awareness of those muscles in there and you can span an octave, you can play a major scale, minor scale, a chromatic scale, on the mouthpiece alone and check me out this is how easy the altissimo is afterwards all right here's our concert day <laughs> simply voice high <laughs> that's altissimo air but the point is a whole crap load of things work together to go up in pitch i can spend years trying to figure out what muscles all of them are and the precise measurements but why would i do that just think oh let me aim my ear higher Your brain has done so much of the work for you just by existing. It's just up to your conscious mind to give it a goal. So now let's go ahead and put it on the sax. So check me out. You can do that same exercise on front F, fork F, which is the fork key in two. Like I said, at first it's gonna sound like whoa, whoa, and then the rest of your life you just work on refining it. It's not building up to it, it's you find it and then refine it. Let's see how far I can go. So now I'm gonna do an altissimo fingering. I'm gonna do altissimo A, which is two, three. Remember, I'm just gonna voice high. I went down that whole time. Now I'm just gonna go the other way. Voicing man. 